As you create individual components or develop your company's design system, you'll find needs for similar but different components. When designing a form, you'll use components for input fields and buttons, maybe even a radio button or a checkbox. Input fields could accept only text or be a drop-down menu or date picker. They could have a blue border stroke when focused that turns red when a value is invalid. Checkboxes could be unchecked, checked, or mixed. Each of the properties and attributes we use to style and describe our components are called properties. A component set is a collection of components, called variants, that all share their properties but have different combinations of values for those properties. Component sets can be one-dimensional, with only a single property with several values. Like in this example with the primary button component set that contains uniquely styled standard, hover, pressed, and disabled variants. Component sets can also be multi-dimensional with multiple properties, each with multiple values. Like if we had a collection of secondary buttons with the same property combinations as the primary button. The number of buttons can balloon quickly if each button has an option with no icon. When used on tablets or mobile, we may also need medium or small versions of our button. We can instantly double our components by adding dark mode. Without variants, finding the exact button you need can be a pain. All of these buttons are different, but we can also think of them as parts of a single whole, a component set. And instead of needing to search through dozens of buttons, we can just find a single button that contains all possible combinations. The way of structuring components also maps more closely to how they're implemented in code. If you already have a system of components named using the slash naming convention, we can click and drag to select all of the components and click Merge as Variants in the Properties panel to instantly convert them into a single component set. Just rename the labels of the various properties and you're good to go. If you belong to a professional team or a Figma organization, you can also publish your component set to the team library. This can dramatically reduce the number of components in the Assets panel and make it easier for you and your team to find the right component faster. Using a component set is as simple as creating an instance of one of the variants and customizing the values for each of the properties from the right sidebar. You can create component sets from scratch or merge existing components to convert them into a single component set. If you don't yet have a robust system of components to convert, don't worry. We'll take you through the mechanics of creating and using variants through a few examples. Let's start by creating a component set for a basic checkbox. This will include three variants, unchecked, checked, and mixed. First, we'll create a 16 by 16 frame, set the corner radius to two, and add a one point blue-gray stroke. This will be the unchecked variant, the default state of our checkbox, so we'll rename it to checkbox slash unchecked. Component sets can only be created from components, so we'll use the keyboard shortcut Command Option K to turn this into a component. In the right side bar, there's a new section for variants. Component sets need to have more than one variant within them. Let's click the plus icon in the variant section and see what happens. Whoa, let's explore what changed. Figma created a copy of our checkbox component and placed both components in a new container. This container is a component set which we can identify by the dashed purple stroke. In the Layers panel, we can see the component set has the same four diamond icon we're used to seeing for our components. Each variant within our component set has a single filled diamond icon. The names of our layers have also been changed. The text before the slash checkbox is now the name of our component set. The text after the slash unchecked is now the name of our default variant. The checkbox has a generic name followed by an ascending number. Variant 2. Layer naming is an important aspect of creating and managing variants. Unlike other layer names in Figma, which can mostly be arbitrary, layer names in a component set have a very specific syntax. This structure contains important information about each variant, including the properties and values associated with that variant. Let's take a closer look. Figma will generate properties for our variants based on the properties and values we associate with them. We'll select our unchecked variant and use the shortcut Command R to rename the layer to observe this. Figma has given this variant the name property equals unchecked. This is because the default property of variant has the value unchecked. At the moment, our variants only have one property. But what if we had two, three, or 12 properties? When there are multiple properties, Figma will separate each property using a comma. We'll show this later in the video. Now, 
let's give our second variant a more descriptive name. We can avoid using the layer naming syntax in the Layers panel by renaming the value itself in the right side bar. Select the Component set, and in the Variant section, click the existing value to rename it. All our variants will use the same properties and values, but each variant needs to have a unique combination of them. If any variants have the same combination of values, like if we rename this to Unchecked, Figma will alert us to the conflict. We want this variant to have a value of checked, so we'll update this and resolve this error. Our variants now have different, unique values for the same property. We can also rename properties to make them more descriptive. With the component set selected, we can rename this property to state. Let's make some changes to our checked variant to distinguish it from our unchecked variant. We can edit our variant directly within the component set. We'll add an 8x8 square inside of it and add a purple fill. This looks great. We've successfully created a component set with two variants. The variants share one property and each one has a unique value. If we select the component set, we can see the values we added in the right side bar. This is all we need to get started with our checkbox component set. We'll explore adding more properties and values to create multi-dimensional variants later. Let's try using our checkbox in our designs. We can access local components and components from other libraries by opening the Assets panel on the left side bar. If you're familiar with components, you might expect to see two components here, one for the unchecked state and another for checked. Component sets collapses all variants down into a single entry, making it easier to find the component we need. We'll drag an instance of our checkbox onto the canvas. If we want to use another variant of the checkbox, we can select it in the right side bar. It's not possible to create an instance of an entire component set. If we select the component set and try to duplicate it, we'll create a brand new component set. This won't always be a useful workflow, but it will speed up the process of creating some similar but unrelated component sets, like a set of radio buttons. Our radio button can only have two values, selected or unselected, but our checkbox could have a third value for a mixed state. Let's create this third mixed variant for our checkbox. There are a few ways we could do this. We could select the component set and, in the canvas, we can click the plus icon inside the component set or click the more icon in the right side bar and select add new variant. We want to use the checked variant as a starting point, so we'll take a third approach. Select the existing checked variant and duplicating it using command D. We'll rename the value to mixed and make some adjustments to its appearance. All set. If we go back to the instance we created earlier, we can now see the mixed variant as an option in the right side bar. We mentioned that the radio button can only have two values, selected or unselected. We call this a binary choice or a Boolean value. Figma automatically recognizes true and false or off and on as Boolean values. Instead of showing the value itself, Figma will show a toggle switch. We'll select the component set to view the existing values. We can then double click on each value to rename them as true and false. We can also rename our property to something that can be described using the same true slash false values. Click on the property in the right side bar to rename it to selected. If we create an instance of the radio button on the canvas, the drop down menu to switch between variants is now a toggle switch. Awesome! So far, we've only built component sets that share a single property, but you can add as many properties and values as you need. The more multi-dimensional our component sets become, the more flexible and powerful they are to use. Our radio button currently has a selected property. Let's add another property to support both the active and inactive versions of our component. Select the component set, click the more icon in the right side bar, and select add new property. We'll name this property active and hit enter to confirm. Figma has added a new property to the sidebar as well as a default value. We want active to also be a binary choice, so we'll create another Boolean value. Both our existing variants are active, so we'll double click on the default value and rename it to true. We'll show you how to add a new value for false in a minute, but first, we'll create the inactive variants of our radio button. If we duplicate our variants, Figma will add new variants in a single vertical line. But we want to organize variants on the canvas in a way that conveys their multi-dimensional nature. We can do this by creating our variants in a 2x2 two two grid. To arrange our variants in a grid, we'll select the component set and drag the right edge to resize it. Then, select our existing variants and duplicate them. Now, 
we have two pairs of identical variants. Remember the error we saw earlier? Here it is again. Let's remove this error by adding a different value for our new variants. We can add new values in the variant section of the right side bar. Click the arrow beside the active property, select add new, and type false in the field. Next, we need to style our inactive radio buttons in a light blue gray. Perfect. Now, we can use the two toggle switches to create any one of our four unique combinations of properties and values. We can select different values in the right side bar to change the variant we're using. But we can also use instance swapping to swap between component sets, just like we can with regular components that don't have any variants. Let's swap the instance of our radio button to the checkbox we made earlier. We'll select the instance and click the component name in the right side bar to open the instance swapping menu. After we select the checkbox, we can choose which variant we want to use. With our component sets created, we can publish them as a library for the rest of our team to use. We'll open the library's modal using the shortcut Alt Option 3 and click Publish next to the current file. Now our team can access all the variants of our component set from the Assets tab in any file. Like we saw earlier, Figma will only show the default variant in the component set. This makes it much easier for team members to find the components they need. Instead of having to know the ins and outs of your design system, they can search for a button component to get access to the right component and all of its possible variants. To learn more, search libraries in the Figma Help Center. Now, we're going to take you through the process of converting existing components to variants. Earlier, we discovered how Figma uses layer names to store important information about each variant. We saw how the slash naming convention worked on a small scale when we renamed the first checkbox to checkbox slash unchecked before creating our component set. We can use this convention with longer and more complex names to create multiple properties and values when converting our existing components. Let's take a look at an existing button in our design system. This button is the primary version of our component is the largest button size and is the default state of the button. This particular version of our button also has no icon. To make it easier to find in our existing design system, we've added these attributes to the button's name separated by slashes. We have another button in our design system that shares some of these values as well as having some values of its own. If we were to merge these components as variants, Figma would use the value before the first slash as the component's name. Each of the subsequent attributes, separated by slashes, would be converted to values. Figma will also create four properties, one for each attribute, and give them generic names. We use two buttons to illustrate the mechanics behind the Merge as Variants button, but it's likely that your team will be working with many more buttons. Thankfully, there's no limit to how many properties and values the variants in your component set can have. We can use this process to convert this large collection of button components segmented by size, type, state, and icon into a single component set. Figma will take most of the guesswork out of the process by creating unique values for each of your variants. The only information Figma doesn't know is the name of the properties themselves. You'll be able to rename those properties to something more descriptive, like we explored earlier. And if you find yourself configuring some properties more than others, you can even click and drag to reorder them from the most to least used. And just like that, you've combined 84 variants into a single component. Variants are a powerful feature that makes it easier to find the component you're looking for and configure it to suit any need. Variants also strengthen your company's design system by bringing your components closer to how they're represented in code. To learn more, search Variants in the Figma Help Center. Let us know how variants help your team in the comments and subscribe to Figma on YouTube for the latest product and community news.